Hello YouTube, this is Gorod Radio Moscow here again with another beer review. Uh, now I'm at home visiting my parents, so I'm filming in my dad's study again, ideal for keeping beer in. It's quite cool in here for some reason, I'm not sure quite why, uh, but I thought since I'm at home I would do one of my very local beers when I'm at home again. This is from one of the two major craft breweries in the county of Clipmanonshire. This is the Williams Brothers Birds and the Bees beer. Now the other uh, major kind of craft brewery in Clipmanonshire is the Harveston Brewery. This one is from Aloha and the Harveston Brewery is from Alva, originally from Dollar though, just the next village along basically. But as is usual with my beer reviews, I'll just take you through a little bit of the history of the Williams Brothers Brew and also tell you a little bit about the history of uh, Aloha, where this one comes from as well. But if you are simply just interested in the tasting of this beer, then feel free just to fast forward towards the last few minutes of the video and you will catch that particular segment. Now the Williams Brothers Brewery, as I've mentioned in my previous videos, I'll put the link uh, for those in the video description, so check them out if you are interested. But the Williams Brothers Brewery brewery started out as the family owned Glen Brew home brewing shop in Glasgow and at this particular point it was only Bruce Williams that was involved with the company and the first ale that they produced was inspired by a 17th century Gaelic recipe for Freyach Heather Ale and this is named after the Celtic mythological hero of the same name but they got a hold of this recipe when a woman of Gaelic descent came in with a, an English translation of this recipe and said to Bruce that she would like to brew a batch of this to share with her family and Bruce agreed that he would brew this batch of beer for her for free if he could have the recipe for that and he agreed to that and I think basically now since she gave them the recipe she gets as much of this beer as she wants but this particular this first batch that they brewed was only five barrels and it was brewed in Tainilt railway station in Argyll and Butte which is a really beautiful little uh, peninsula of the country that's over on the west coast just uh, sort of south of Glasgow uh, but this is a very very beautiful part of the country and uh, they only brewed this little five uh, five barrel batch in a railway station but they found the demand for this thing was huge. Uh, so at this particular point, he's, uh, Bruce's brother Scott joined the company and they began to develop other historic recipes such as the Grotsit, which is a gooseberry wheat ale, the Kelpie, which is a seaweed ale, Ebelum, which is an elderberry black ale, and Alaba, the Gaelic word for Scotland, which is a Scots pine ale. I've need to try these ones. I've not been able to try them yet. But these four recipes were produced at the Craigmill Brewery in Straven, which is a little town to the south of Glasgow, but they were produced there between 1998 and 2004. Now in 2004 they moved to their current base at the 4th Bank Brewery in Kelly Bank, Aloha and this was when they adopted the name Williams Brothers Brewery. Now since they moved to this facility they've developed 25 new recipes and uh, they're now regarded as one of the most prolific uh, craft breweries in Scotland. They're very, very well respected. I think the only one who can probably compete with them in terms of the number of recipes is probably Brewdog, but they're a very, very well known and well respected craft brew company throughout Scotland. But oddly enough, they're the last brewery in the old brewing capital of Scotland. Aloha, which is only one or two miles away from where I live, eh, was a little port village and there was a lot of trade and things went on with Europe here in, in years gone by, obviously, but there's still a glassworks there and eh, Clipmanonshire as a county is actually very famous. There's, you go around and you see a lot of these warehouses here and that's where they leave the whiskey to mature and there were a lot of beer breweries here originally but this is the last one that's left. The pub I actually go out to drink in with my friends is called the Old Brewery and it's only like a little the little front of house bit that's left of it now. They knocked down the old uh, factory of it which is a bit of a shame. A lot of these things in Scotland, the old factories they convert them into apartments now but they just knocked this one down and actually you can go into Aloha and there's one of the copper kettles sort of welded into the ground there that's from the original brewery but they've built a load of modern apartments behind it which is a bit of a shame it would have been cool if they'd kind of kept the old feel of the town and things like that but you know politicians always think they know best modernization and all of this which is good in some cases but not in others but um, if you're wondering where Aloha is exactly um, in, the in the very heart of Scotland between Edinburgh and Glasgow you have Stirling obviously very famous for uh, William Wallace and Robert the Bruce and the battles with the English there uh, in, the in 1305 and 1314 I think were the major ones and uh, that's it's very well known for that and Aloha is about maybe 10 miles or so to the southeast of that in the very very heart of Scotland just so those of you watching outside of Scotland know exactly where we're talking about here but we've got a very scenic part of the country here you know if you're in Scotland uh, touring about have a little look at it's a really nice part of the country, not much going on, so don't plan to spend about two weeks in Clip Manager because you'll be bored stiff. But anyway, let's get on with the tasting of this beer. I'll just let you have a little 
look at the uh, the bottle and the cap of this one. So I'll bring the camera up to make sure you're seeing that. I hope you've not got bored with my rambles about Scotland, but you can see here, as, uh, as you would expect, it has little bees on it here and a bird here. I'm not quite sure whether this is... A blue, it looks like a blue jay actually, but I'm not sure. My friend Grant will probably kill me for that. I've probably got the bird wrong. I'm not really into zoology and biology that he is. He goes out and hunts badgers and all of that sort of thing. He's a bit crazy. But as you can see, the standard Williams Brothers uh, beer cap on this one. But without further ado, let's get this guy open and get on with the tasting. Now this one is a 4.3% golden ale. When I looked up the hops for this one, the Williams Brothers website actually worked for me this time, which I was quite uh, pleased about. Last time I did it, it didn't work for me, so I couldn't tell you the hops that were in the, I think it was the Joker IPA, I couldn't get into the website to actually find out the hops, but the hops in this one apparently are Bobek, Cascade, Amarillo and Nelson Sauvine, uh, and it's malted with special wheat and lager malts, and apparently there's some elderflower in this one as well, so this one will be quite interesting. I'm not a great fan of elderflower, so we'll see how this one goes, but yeah, let's just get the rest of this guy out. I've grown quite fond of the Williams Brothers beers quite recently. I've gotten more into my Scottish craft beers. But anyway, let's give this guy a little look and see. It's a little bit hazy, but mainly clear. There's not really much in the way of carbonation in this one. It looks a very kind of still beer, very thin head. It's quite a, a big bubbly head, this one, but there is a sort of underlying layer of just frothiness. It's maybe my just my pouring skills aren't very good for this one. But as you can see, a really bright, kind of light-looking golden colour. In terms of the aroma, very it's actually very floral, very, very kind of gardeny aromas you're getting off of this one. But, but yeah, very kind of sweet smelling, big floral and grassy notes. Maybe a bit of um, of herbs in here. Pro yeah, that's probably making sense. Herbs, grassiness, floral, garden character. If you breathe it in a bit deep, deeper, there's some grapefruit and maybe just a little hint of citrus. But yeah, a very, very fruity beer. There is maybe some yeast, but it's, it's quite subdued. I'm not really picking up the elderflower to be honest, it's mainly the sort of floral uh, elements to this that are coming out first, but let's give it a taste. As you can see, the head is fading quite a little bit. Hmm, very, very light. Yeah, you're getting the elderflower in the taste of this one actually if you gulp it. Yeah, but the first thing that's coming is the sort of light malts to this one, and the floral character is really obvious in this. But yeah, it's a very kind of floral and then herby flavoured beer. The elderflower and the grapefruit notes are there in the background. I'm not really picking up so much citrus. That's very, very subdued. But it is, it's quite zesty, but this is mainly a kind of a uh, herbally flavoured beer. It's a lot of herbally hops you're getting in this one. Yeah, that's, I would really say, this is really just a kind of very light sort of garden beer. A lot of herbality to it, kind of, the, the, the grassiness and the floral notes are very, very prominent in this one. The elderflower is there when you sort of, it's in the background there, but I think the fruits are really quite well mixed together and it kind of, it doesn't really allow you to pick out the individual ones, but the fruity notes to it are actually quite nice. You're getting that in the background, but it's mainly, the main thing with this one is the uh, the sort of garden character, the floral the floral and herbal hops, that's, that's really it. This is a very kind of light, sessionable beer. It's very crisp, very refreshing. The mouthfeel is quite wet. I mean, it's slightly dry and bitter on the finish, but there's a really good balance between the flavour of this one. But this one's quite different because it's obviously, it's mainly the sort of her herbal and gardeny character you're getting off this one. I actually really quite like this one. I'm not sure whether I want to say it's my favourite Williams Brothers beer, but this is another very, very good one. And I mean, this is the thing. Everyone has different opinions about beer. You know, your favourite Williams Brothers uh, beer is probably going to be different from mine. They've produced 25 different recipes. I'll put the website to the website link in the description and you can check out all these different ones. But this is another very, very strong brew from the Williams Brothers brewery. You won't be disappointed with anything you try from them. They're a very, very good brewery. And... Uh, 
you know, they're an just another success story of the, the boom in Scottish craft brewing over the last few years. Very prolific, a lot of things for you to choose from. So, you know, whatever you like, you will find something from this brewery. I think this is a very, very strong beer. It's quite, uh, it's quite different in the fact that it's quite a gardeny character. It's different from the ones I've had before. But this is the thing: they produce all these different things. They produce all these different beers for all the different flavors. So they're catering to all of the different uh, beer geeks that you get. But anyway, I hope this beer review has been informative for you, and if not, been rambling away. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, there will be more uh, Williams Brothers beers to follow, and I'll also be reviewing visiting the Harveston Brewery from my local area soon as well. I've got two of their other beers sitting around that I need to review as well, but there will be more Williams Brothers, so I hope you've enjoyed this one. Please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Comment in the comment section and let me know your own thoughts on this beer if you've tracked it down. It's always interesting, actually, to see how far uh, worldwide these beers get. I know the Freya Heather Ale uh, is pretty worldwide now, but I'm not sure how far and wide the other ones are actually getting. I know they, they do have a big export market, Williams Brothers, but please let me know where you're trying this beer as well, actually. It's always interesting to hear that. But thanks again for watching my beer reviews. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll catch you again soon. Cheers.